Hey guys, welcome back for the second in this two-part series looking at the EQ6R mount, the Skywatcher EQ6. I've got the mount set up indoors. Everything's plugged in electrically and mechanically just as I would have it set up outdoors. And now that uh, I've done all of that, I need to verify that I can control the mount uh, through Nina, APT, PhD2, Stellarium, etc., all of the usual suspects. So I thought I'd be loading in EQ Mod since that's what I've always seen people using with the Skywatcher mount. Uh, but then a friend of mine, hey Bill, uh, said, hey, you might want to check out this Green Swap server. So I went ahead and downloaded the Green Swap server and uh, I'm going to demonstrate its application here as we load it up and then attach all of our software to it and then use that to control the mount. An astrophotography setup consists of uh, a myriad of different hardware components. All have to communicate and be connected. And But we also have a myriad of software starting with ASCOM. In this case, we'll want to make sure we have ASCOM 6.4 or better installed on the system. And then we'll want to make sure we can control the system for our imaging session using Nina or astrophotography tool in my case. And of course, there are others out there. We also have planetarium software that we use. There are several options. I use Stellarium for all of my work. And finally, we have PhD2 to control the guiding. All these pieces of software that can connect and have to communicate to the mount and get feedback from the mount need to go through some server application. In the case of the CGEM, I would load up a Next Remote handset, a piece of software that mimics the look of the handset, the actual physical handset, and it would attach to a a physical COM port on the computer and then create virtual COM ports for all of the other software to latch onto. Things are, at least on the surface, a little bit different here with GreenSwap server. It's going to serve as the server and all the software will connect to it and it will talk with ASCOM to control the scope. So let's go over to the website for GreenSwap server and download it and get things uh, connected with the mount. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is start up the ultimate power box connected up to the mount and then I'm going to send power over to the mount so that turns it on. I need to verify that the USB port is on for the mount. It is. So we are good to go. As you look at the mount you can see that the red light on the side of the mount has come on indicating that it is uh, now powered and we'll go to the website and if you scroll down here, you can find the latest release. Just click on that, download it, and then execute it. It installs uh, in a directory of its choice. I don't recall having a choice of where to install it. Uh, what I have done is created a shortcut for the place where it stores the server. First thing you'll want to do before you attach it to anything is to figure out what serial port the mount is coming in on. And the way you do that on a Windows system, you can go over here to the start and type in device and then that will bring up some selections device manager is what you want and if we have the device manager we can scroll down to the ports and what you're looking for in here is the line that says prolific usb serial com port so that's it for me that's com port 11 and now another thing you're going to have to do i noticed this on uh, a cloudy nights post so thank you to cloudy nights for this uh, but i have confirmed it here as well so that uh, older information is still valid come down to properties and what you'll want to do is go over to port settings and make sure this baud rate bits per second is set at 50 115,200 there don't change anything else and say okay and then you can close that down and then we can bring up the GS server for the first time and this window will come up now you want to go into this settings section here these three horizontal bars and you'll note that I've already done this but you'll want to select the COM port that you actually have and that was COM port 11 attached to the prolific COM port uh, that we saw in device manager you want to set the baud rate to the 115,200 as we did for the uh, com port on the pc another thing you can do here set the park position for me i like for it to be at the home position and you can press set now as we go back over to the main settings we can connect up to the mount and it says when starting normally put the amount in home position and it comes up. So that proves that we have uh, achieved connection with the mount. And you can see that it has a right ascension and declination loaded into the coordinates. But for now, that's what we need to do. And one last thing I set, I like to have the voice speech on feedback. Turn the no sleep mode on so that keeps it from going to sleep and a home warning on. Now that we've established communication with the mount through the port, we can go ahead and disconnect and close the window here. Let's go ahead and bring up PHD2 
this is what you want. You want the ASCOM GS Sky Telescope, and then that's what you will connect to. So make sure that's selected in the box as it is here. So let's close down the Stylog box, and we'll go over to Stellarium and hook it up to the uh, GreenSwap server as well. To back to dark. And right now the scope is at home position, so theoretically it's pointing up towards the North Pole in the Northern Hemisphere. Now this is an optional setup that we're doing here. I've never actually used Stellarium for scope control, but it turns out to be very easy. I also find it easy to work within APT or within Nina to, to control the scope. So it's not that big of a deal, but I figure since we're here, we can go ahead and touch base on this. For this, we want to go over to the side window and load up the configuration window. And if you haven't set this up before, inside the plugins area, you can scroll down to the bottom and there'll be a telescope control plugin. Now, if you don't have this set up, this won't be ticked. So go ahead and tick that to load at startup, just in case you can't read it. Click OK, get out of here, and you'll have to close Stellarium and restart so it will then reload the plugin. Now, once you get the plugin installed, down here is this grayed out button for me, uh, and we can go ahead and click on that and we can set up our telescope. Now, of course, I've already set mine up, but basically you'll uh, hit this button down here for a new, to add a new telescope, and in theory, you could add several mounts to this, but you would add this for a new telescope. You would select for telescope controlled by, you would click ASCOM for your telescope. You would give it a new, uh, you could type in your own name for that telescope. I'm using J2000. I think you wanna be consistent for all software that you're using so that uh, you don't, send current J now coordinates when you're expecting J2000 coordinates. So try to be consistent there. And once you select that, you can come down here and choose your ASCOM telescope. For the Green Swamp server, it will be this ASCOM GS Sky telescope connection. And so you'll select that and then you'll be uh, good to go. Now, of course, I've already set up GreenSwap server with Stellarium. So in my case, all I have to do is click on it and then press connect. And you can see the little reticule pops up and shows where the telescope theoretically is pointing right now. We can close that window down and leave behind this window. And then when we want to move the scope, we can just click on a uh, potential target, come back over here, load the coordinates, and then slew. Or alternatively, you can come over here and press Control-1. And so this shows that we are, in fact, connected to the mount, so that's good. So now let's go over and start up Nina. So we have the startup window here for Nina. I'm going to go over to Options and then to Imaging. Now, normally at the end of a session, we'll want to park the mount, and we want to be sure where the mount is parking. Uh, so, for example, if I wanted to park the mount after a uh, completing an imaging sequence, then I would select this to on. When the imaging sequence completes, the mount will automatically find the park position. The one thing you have to be careful of in GS Server is that when you load up the telescope, and we're going to go ahead and select again from this ASCOM, this pull-down box here, we've got to select the correct uh, connection, which is the ASCOM GS Sky Telescope. So we, did, we were able to successfully connect to the mount. Now, the one thing you want to do, I'm currently in the home position. I'm going to press set, park set as the park position, this home position. And you have to do this every time. So every imaging session, you have to do this. And now when a sequence ends and the telescope goes to park, it will go back to the home position. Otherwise, it's going to go to some other position. And there are several ways you can control the scope. For example, we can go over to Stellarium. And I can pick a target over here so it's selected. And then I can go back to Nina and go to the Framing Assistant and load it in. And you can see it loaded in the name of the star. And now it's going to go pull an image of that area of the sky up using this sky survey as a resource. There it is. And now we can simply press slew to slew over to the target. Slewing to coordinates. Slewing complete. And you can see the red hill is now pointed over to the target we just slewed to. Now, alternatively, we could use Stellarium. For example, I could uh, click on this guy. And now I'm going to press Control-1. Slewing to coordinates. Slewing complete. If I'm done with the testing, I can go back to Nina 
and the, t the equipments tab tell Fluing it to go to ahead park. and park the telescope and it will go back to the park that we set when we first started our our imaging session parked and now we can shut down the telescope and shut down nina and now let's go over to astrophotography tool and see where we set this up in that program astrophotography tool comes up with the user profile that it most recently used and gives you a short time to act on it i didn't change it so it's going to load up the profile connected. and it will connect to the mount what you could do is disconnect telescope disconnected and then if you want to pull up or change the mount that you're connecting to for example for me switching from a cgm over to uh, this eq6r i would go back into the ascom telescope chooser again pick that driver telescope say okay, connected and then it connects with no problem whatsoever and we'll unpark the telescope because it's currently listed as Tracking being a park and I'm going to uh, press the shift and park button to set the, set the current home position as the park position. That's something we've got to do, whether it's Nina or APT. Park set. So park is set. The scope is currently tracking. And I'm going to go to the objects, custom, and then scroll down until I find that star in the database here. There it is. All right, so it loads the coordinates into the RA and deck, and now all we have to do is press go to. Slewing to coordinates. And you can see the reticule moving over to the selected star. Slewing complete. And now we'll go back and park the scope. Slewing to park. Here west. And so we have successfully parked the scope and moved it using astrophotography tool. Now let's go back over and disconnect the scope. We are currently in the park position. Telescope disconnected. And we can get out of it. And there's no need to have the connection to the telescope with Stellarium, so we can disconnect the mount here and close down these windows. Now let's take a look at the startup procedures. They've altered a little bit since I switched from the CGM. The first step is the same. It's, it's basically we need to start or turn on power to the mount. And by doing that, I turn on the power using the control on off switches for the uh, ultimate power box interface that I have. Once power is applied, it knows it's pointing in the home position and it automatically feeds the proper RA and deck coordinates into the mount. So it knows where it's pointing, at least approximately. And so it's ready to start uh, taking commands for slewing. Whereas with the CGM, I had to do what was called a quick align, which basically was a step that told it to assume you're in the home position and then take the uh, current location and time of day and then from that compute what the RA and deck coordinates are and, and plug those into the mount. Whether you're using NINA or APT, start the software, start NINA or start APT, and it will automatically start the green uh, swamp servers. The thing you want to be careful of in both cases is to be sure and identify what your park position is. And for me, I like the home position so that when I tell it to park, it goes back to the home position. Then you can start up Stellarium. The one thing that's that's interesting about this is with the green swap server installed and now operating, every new piece of equipment that comes up and that you tie to the mount, it will simply increment the number of applications accessing the server. And then you can start a PhD2 with an APT. PhD2 will start automatically in Nina when you click onto the, when you turn on the the uh, guiding option when you select the guider but in uh, APT I find that I have to start PhD2 on its own and connect the guide cam and the mount so there's an extra step there and then you just start your imaging session as before but the thing you need to, to remember when using this is to uh, be sure and set the park position otherwise the uh, the scope may be going some location where you don't want it to go. Okay, guys, just a quick summary here. If you want to use the Green Swamp server, it certainly seems like a good piece of software, and I'm looking forward to getting outside and using it. Just you got to go through a couple of steps to set it up, find out what the COM port actually is. In my case, it was COM port 11, and then set the baud rate to 115,200, and then go over to the settings window in GSS 
and set the uh, COM port and the baud rate and then you should be good to go and you'll be able to connect to it. Now once you get it connected go ahead and disconnect it because Nina and or APT will start GSS once you connect to the mount. If you're going to use Stellarium for telescope control it's uh, certainly optional. You can probably do all the pointing and the scope control that you motion control that you need to do within Nina or APT. In the uh, Stellarium plugin for example you'll set the telescope control by section to ASCOM and all the other uh, software that you'll be attaching to. Make sure you associate the telescope driver to each piece of software. It's the ASCOM GS Sky telescope driver. The one little issue, and I hope they fix this in an upcoming release, is that GSS doesn't remember uh, when you set the park position. I think I'm good to go. The mount seems to be working anyway. All right, guys. Well, that's all I've got for today. Clear skies, and hopefully we'll start getting some data coming in on guiding performance of this new mount. Take care.